I can't see you. I can't see you. <laughs> Doesn't it look like it's like two in the afternoon? Hey there, what's going on, everybody? I know it's kind of quiet. Let me let me get the volume up here. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Sorry about the delay. Tried to do something different, didn't work because the meta is changing daily. Things are changing every day. Oh, that's interesting. That's really interesting. Hi, Patty Loman. What is going on, girl? Let me just do let me do the private thing really quick. I didn't mean to pin that. Interesting. Hi, oh. Patty Loman. Normally I have my thing to put my thing in, but I don't have a thing. And I need, I need, I need um books. Hey Julie Lewis, what's going on? Fun. What? Like what? Wait, hold on, everybody. I need um books. Hey Julie Lewis, what's going on? Okay. Um, how are you guys? Let me just do something super fast. Let me go to my page, Jenna Mamina, and it's not letting me do what I want. Okay, edit privacy. Ba bam, public, public. It is Tuesday night, Tuesday, November 2nd. Birthday, Nino, I love you, I miss you. Birthday time. And I'm here every day, seven days, seven nights, 14 times a week. But today, I am in another house again and check who who I'm here with. It's a new look for me. So good. I learned if you pull them off easy, it's ready. It's not quite ready, but it's close. But check it out. Ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Andrew Raiders here. <laughs> What's going on? I have a pineapple. Do you like pineapple? We forgot the books. We can both be like half on the screen. We're doing something here, folks. What's going on, everybody? How are you? How are you? Um, that's always a loaded question. How are you this very moment? I am satiated. With? With dinner. Dinner. What did you have for dinner? Well, we had, at, earlier I had leftovers from last night. Oh, so pre, like a pre-dinner? and some thai inspired vegetable thing so you that was like a like an appetizer it was i don't know when we're really going to eat but i'm hungry now and so i'm going to eat something now that's what that was was that before i got here yeah oh okay so you had a pre-dinner i had a pre-dinner do you usually do pre-dinners you have a heck of a metabolism don't you I can eat. You can eat. But I, it's like one eighth of what I would do in my 20s. So when you were growing up, was there something that your mom had to keep buying? Oh. Um, <laughs> were you a milk guy? No, I hated milk. Okay. I hated milk. Have to drink a glass of milk. We we're forced to drink a glass of milk. This is my trauma. We we're forced to drink a glass of milk for dinner every night and i had to have it very cold oh so did you put ice so in i wouldn't taste it oh so not chocolate do you no. not like chocolate no i love a, chocolate oh you like chocolate dark chocolate do you have any shauna do you have any dark chocolate <laughs> hey check it out you ready there are 11. Okay, damn. Oh, now it's 10 again. It only lasted a split second. How's the lighting for you guys? It's a little bright. We could there, we could do the gold of that. Well, I don't know how to do that. I'll show you. Um, Here's the thing. That means you gotta get up. Gotta I'm get sorry. Up. 
We gotta get out. It's all the way over here. Okay. So do what? Press switch button. Not the on off switch. Second one. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Leslie. Oh, that maybe do that again. No, nope. try that other button. Yeah. Oh, that's a little bit nicer. Oh, I just one open on it. Wow. What do they have here? Oh, yeah, I don't know. What are they? I want two of those. Pig. Okay. Pig. She called them a pig. <laughs> gluten free shortbread? I've never had gluten free shortbread. <sighs> oh, check it out. Ready, everybody, to dance again? Where's our dance? <laughs> Didn't quite make it. It's back to ten. So, do you have pre-dessert time too? I'm not big into dessert, but I love these little things. <laughs> Show. What is it? Um, every once in a while, someone will take us to Costco, and you can get these things. Unreal. They're, I don't like coconut. They're healthy mounds bars. <laughs> healthy mounds bars. Hi, Bill Winnegar. How are you? Hi, Mama Grace. Yes, I'm at Andy and Shauna's house. Richard Hilden. Hello, sir. How are you? So what's going on, Andy? So there's no pre-dessert that happens? No, I don't know. What did you have for breakfast? Nothing. I did my... Um, what are you doing now? My intermittent fasting thing that I don't have to work that hard to do. Because I don't normally eat big breakfast or any breakfast. But you stop eating, like I do my intermittent fasting a few times a week. Three times, four times. I usually don't start eating until about one o'clock anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. But right now. the secret is you got to stop eating mm -hmm. the night before mm -hmm. at a reasonable hour. Mm -hmm. If you do midnight snacks, it doesn't really count. Oh. Oh my God. Sorry, I didn't make it. Whenever there are 11. I know. You go. I know. So what's new? What's going on? Um, Hi, Mama well, Grace. For those of you who don't know, last week we had a huge rainstorm, which on my birthday ended the fire season. So it was a yay boo kind of thing. I was supposed to be here. Yes, you were. Yes, you we were. got where we are. In one 24 hour period, 80% of the total rainfall of the entire year last year in one little storm. And one, your power got in one big out. storm. That happens all the time. Oh, no. Okay. Do you need another one? <laughs> and Shauna said she can't have another one. Yeah, but I don't like them. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Wow. Mm. Coconut to me is almost like tomato. Uh, oh, you don't like tomatoes. That's right. You pick no, them out. Tomatoes are not as delicious. As mm. I like coconut, like fresh coconut when I'm in Jamaica and it, I open it up. But like a, a thing. That's for your cookies. Mm. I already ate one. You're yeah. half on and here's some fresh cashew milk. Like I get fresh cashew milk that Shauna made. You do enjoy eating. What else do you like to eat, Andy? Um, good savory food. 
And really, Shauna's Emily? Dessert. No. Yeah, you like to eat mine. Well, Shauna makes great desserts. No, I mean, if it's mine, you'll eat it. You mean if, if, if it's in front of your person, he'll eat your dessert? <laughs> Jamaica, Mom, let's go. Let's go. I got the plates. So what else do you like to eat? When you were a kid, you didn't like to eat Oh, when I was a kid? Noodles. This is all Noodles. crap, but I'd always eat cold cereal. Come home from school and have cold cereal. What kind? Um, Wheaties, cornflakes, raisin You didn't do bran. the sugar cereal. Ra Did you like yeah. grape nuts? I loved grape nuts as a child. I guess at some point I ate Captain Crunch and then it would rip the- you Do you know, know that Captain Crunch roof, is vegan? Roof out. <laughs> it's vegan. So is gasoline. Who taught me that? I'll, I'll tell you later who taught me that. Yeah. Old Berkeley girl. Taught Doesn't me mean that. it's healthy. Captain Crunch, she would eat all these like really natural things. And then I'd walk in my house and she was eating Captain Crunch. I'm like, well, she's a vegan. Like, okay. The milk you're eating with, it's not vegan, but okay. Back in the 90s. Vodka's vegan. Vodka's vegan because yeah. it's potatoes. You can get blueberry vodka. They make blueberry vodka now. Yeah. Not, not vodka flavored with blueberries. Mm -mm. But made from, made with blueberries made from blueberries mm. and you can get wild blueberry vodka i would think anyone have any questions for for the for the andy i still like grape nuts yeah i can't eat them but i like the crunch. oh right in high school i got into grape nuts love grape nuts but it had to be a certain texture you put and i and I, because I hate milk, this is going to sound, make me a liar, but I'd put a little milk on and it would absorb the milk, but I couldn't have any real liquid remaining in the bowl. Oh, I like that too. I like that too. And the grape nuts would mm -hmm. absorb Shut a off. certain amount, not be mushy, mushy, but not be dry very crunchy either. I like, did you, anyone or Andy, did anyone ever have a cereal called Concentrate? It was made by Kellogg's. It was in a box about this big. It was a gold box called Concentrate. It was so good. They were teeny, they looked like little, like, you know, that plant um, tear, baby's tears or whatever, not baby's breath, but tear, the little green. It looked like that. And it was a cereal that Mr. Kellogg created because he had a whole health center right. in Battle Creek, Michigan. Oh, way on. Way, yeah. yeah, 1800s. Well, what am I drinking? In the 70s. You never had concentrate, William D? Julie says grape nuts make her think of gravel. In the 70s, when the health food movement started to get more popular, Certain cereals were considered healthy cereals, <laughs> like grape nuts or uh, bran. What, what were the raisin bran? No, the twixt. You know the the biscuit. Oh, shredded wheat. Shredded wheat. Um, what else was considered healthy? Not Lucky Charms, Rob Morocco. Not Lucky Charms. They're magically delicious, though. Have you ever had Lucky Charms? Me? Mm -hmm. um, I have, and I didn't inhale. Didn't like them. I hate candy. As I mean, who would do this? <laughs> you just ate candy. <laughs> no, that was real. It That's was candy. Real dark chocolate. Yeah, but it was candy. You can call it candy. Would did you do you give out candy for trick or treat for Halloween? No, kids don't come here. They know better. So at some point, and maybe this is true in your town, in the old days, when I was a kid, you just go outside and walk up and down your street or around the block, and you're and just go trick or treating. 
But now there they are des there are destination trick or treat streets, and they change over the years. But certain streets and realtors have to disclose when you buy a house mm -hmm. that this is gonna happen. like where I was was a slow street in Oakland, mm -hmm. packed, packed oh. till nine o'clock. People were coming through. Well, you guys saw it. So this has never been a street that kids trick or treated on. I mean, occasionally the really little ones that live around, you know, they would come by at three thirty, something like did that. Did your kids go trick or treating? They did, but we would go. Ooh. We would go to this other street about a mile away, and those houses, those people would do it. They would do it up. A friend of mine was giving away someone you know too. She was giving away hostess cupcakes and hostess Twinkies, like big things. And kids, oh, sorry, excuse me, not sorry. Oh, She gave away, <laughs> she was giving away the cupcakes and hostess Twinkies and the kids were like, no thanks. And they give them back to her. So then she put a note on her door and said, I am never doing Halloween again. <laughs> Cold pizza for breakfast is good. Oh yeah. Leftover pizza in the fridge. What kind of pizza do you like? Well, now I'm not doing pizza so much, but I love, oh man, Berkeley cheese board pizza and all the, all the um, wannabes are pretty good too. Question. Do I want to ask this? I don't know. Do you get a flu shot? I don't know. I haven't. Do you get one normally? I've never gotten one. Neither have I. Mm -hmm. Are you going to get one? No. No. John DeFazio likes, he liked to warm it up. Yeah, now I do. I wouldn't eat cold. And, and because I'm 80, no, 95% vegan now, I, I don't really eat pizza. It's you can do a vegan a cheese. Moon. The vegan cheese, yeah, it's all right. It's not that good. Why not get a vaccine? Why not get a vaccine? The, the flu vaccine? Mm -hmm. um, I just never felt it was necessary. Um, it's completely different than the COVID vaccine. And um, do we want to talk about it? Or... Sure, talk about it. Hi, Bonnie. Bonnie's going to be on the show Thursday night. William got a flu shot with his booster at the same time, one arm and the other arm. Oh, whoa. Yeah, people are doing that. It's a thing. Um, I'm sure it's a thing. Um, so here's why I wouldn't do that, but I'm not, you know, it's, it's not a huge thing, but usually the way a body encounters illness and the whole idea of an immunization is to mimic the illness so that your immune system mounts an, uh, a response most like a, a natural attack. So if you are getting multiple diseases at the same time, that's not something that usually we would encounter. The immune system usually doesn't hit, get hit three, four, five different ways at the same time. So um, that's one argument for not giving very young children three, four, five different immunizations at the same time. Uh, I know it's more convenient and from a public health standard, um, you'll get higher rates because otherwise you'd have to go back to the doctor's office for every single little vaccine for every particular illness. So it's a compromise. Um, but all things being equal, I wouldn't want to do that to my immune system. And the thing with the flu vaccine is that every year, and I don't know how many months, many months, uh, ahead of time, they have to do this, but it's like a weather report and they have to predict what next year's flu virus might 
<clears throat> might be like, and then create the vaccine along those lines. <clears throat> Sorry, I got some coconut caught in my throat. See, that's why you don't drink, eat two of those. That's right. Um, also, I am, I don't consider myself to be in a category where, uh, a, a, a health category where the flu is going to be that dangerous for me. Um, maybe 20 years from now, I would think, might think differently. Or if I had a, 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 an immune situation, um, but I don't. So that's why I, I'm not eager to go out and get the flu vaccine for myself. But when you get the, when it's time for you to get the booster? I will get the booster. Optimum word, predict. I am only 61. So Hold on one second. It's not available. keep playing it but you get the you get the gist. yeah i get the gist um so we're talking about the booster sure yeah it's not available for my uh age group right now um and then the world health organization is asking the united states to not do the booster so that there's more vaccine available for the rest of the world um so, so you're doing your part that would be an argument to not get the booster, but that doesn't mean that the United States would uh, then send my booster shot someplace else. Um, so I am likely to get the booster when it's available for my age group. The other consideration is when did you get your last um, Back shot? COVID shot? For me, I got it fairly early, February 23rd. Your last one? was my last one. Oh wow. So it's been like eight, nine months. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would I would get it where we live here. It's uh, one of the lowest rates of COVID Turn off all alarms. Uh, active COVID probably in the country. country definitely. So um, it's not that critical right here. She's just telling me she turned off all of the alarms. Okay. Do you guys have any questions? Usually I have it up a little higher, so we're a little, we're looking down a bit, but that's okay. We're kind of fun. Hi, Mike Pasquale. We went to high school together. Oh. Junior high, high school. And Bonnie's here. Suzanne is here. Rob Morocco. Rob says they typically use Southern Hemisphere flus for those in, in the North. Oh, yeah because it will make its way here. Now in Chinese medicine, um, you know, nobody knew about flu virus or um, bacteria, but the way, not but, the way they would describe upper respiratory illness traditionally is the same way you describe uh, the weather because in, in Taoism, we are not separate from nature. We're part of nature. And so the way, if you look out the window, you'd say, oh, it's hot or it's dry or it's wet or it's windy or it's cold. Um, and that's how we describe illness in the body. So a, an upper respiratory infection could be called wind heat or wind chill, often wind is an element. And the reason why I would call it wind is because it changes quickly. It comes on suddenly um, it can move around. And wind could be the element that brings it on. So, which makes sense because people tend to start getting upper respiratory infections in the fall and winter. 
when it's windy and cold. In the summer, you can get chilled when it's very hot during the day, but it cools off mm -hmm. at night mm -hmm. and, or a wind picks up and you've been sweating during the day because it's hot, but you don't cover up quickly enough and that the cold can get trapped. And that's where the achiness comes from, the achiness and the chills. Mm -hmm. When you first start getting an upper respiratory infection, it could come on like that. And then we would call it wind chill at that point. Uh, but it can progress and become like a bacterial infection where you'd be hot and have a high fever. Um, oh, let me say something about fever. So they didn't have thermometers. So there could be a quote, high temperature, but you could be feeling very cold. And people, I'm sure you've all experienced having a fever but being chilled, or you can have a fever and be very hot. So those distinctions are made in Chinese medicine and the treatments are different depending on what's going on. So what do you think of Chinese medicine to boost your immune system? So there's a concept in Chinese medicine of your, there's the evil, Qi, the evil energy coming to attack you from the outside, which today we talk about viruses and bacteria. Um, but then there's your internal, what we call righteous Qi, your, your immune system, your ability to defend and fight against that. And the, the treatments are going both ways. So in, in Chinese medicine, you always want to support the righteous chi. You want to tonify the system, strengthen the system so that it can fight whatever's coming towards it. And so that's, there's a whole category of herbs that would be, we consider tonifying. You tonify chi, you tonify blood. So you recommend herbs and acupuncture when you're doing, when you're boosting your immune system. Yeah. So personally, in my evolution, when I first started, I, I went to a, a Chinese medicine school that was mostly focused on herbal medicine, even though we were becoming licensed acupuncturists. And historically in China, the herbal path and the acupuncture path were parallel, but often separate. There was, there was overlap, but to be an herbalist in China, you had to be literate and you'd have to pass an exam to become what they call an imperial physician. And, and the reason why you had to be literate was because you had to read all of the herbs in China. All the herbs and all of the old texts and the descriptions. Of, not this kind of text. Not that kind of text. Um, and it was an intellectual, more of an intellectual process. You, you take in information about the patient's condition, their symptoms, signs. You would take their pulse. You would look at their, look at their tongue. And you come to some idea, conclusion about what the, the illness is. And then you write out a formula. In, in Chinese medicine, single herbs are not used that often. You almost always use combinations of herbs. Big old bags. Because like in uh, with drugs, there are effects and there are side effects. Uh, you could say they're all effects. But let's say ginseng. Ginseng has a quality that's very, well, red ginseng um, has a very warming effect. So if you take it, take too much of it, you can get overheated. And so you would usually take ginseng with other herbs that would balance off that heat. And the way they described uh, creating formulas was much like looking at the imperial court. So the main the main herb going for the main effect would be considered the emperor. Wow. And then there are all the ministers. So there are ministers that would support the emperor's 
project. But then there would also be herbs to counter that force. So that, it, again, to if there were side effects. And so you'd have a, a formula that was balanced so that you wouldn't have um, side effects. Everything was about balance. So you, so you come, you combine herbs, mixed herbs, and acupuncture, to. Oh yeah. Oh yes. I, re I remember why I started this. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to a herbal school, even, and we learned acupuncture, but we were really being taught by herbalists, and acupuncture lineage is more of a apprenticeship, and you don't have to be literate. Traditionally, you didn't have to be. Um, it was more hands-on, uh, more energetic. You you'd feel you'd feel the points and see if you got a response. Is it tender? Is it sore? Um, and you did not have to necessarily be able to read old texts to do acupuncture. You were, there was a more of an oral tradition. Now, how much do we want to get into this? <laughs> There's 12 people here. Are you guys enjoying this? Um, I'm enjoying it. I could it. tell I'm you what happened when Mao came into power, Chairman Mao. Um, so acupuncture and herbal medicine were separate and not equal. And when Mao came into power in 19... 48 ish. Uh, they wanted, he wanted, and everybody under him agreed to get rid of old China, including Chinese medicine, including Chinese characters. Um, Mao simplified many of the characters, the Ch writing. And to this day, it, mainland China. Jenna's <laughs> out of the picture now. See ya. Uh, to this day, I'm mainland China has simplified characters, but thankfully, the diaspora, uh, Taiwan, and any other place in the world where there are Chinese people, they, they still use the traditional characters. But I digress. Uh, so Mao tried to get rid of Chinese medicine, but then you got to use something. And Western bourgeois medicine wasn't going to cut it. So what they did was they brought Chinese medicine back, but tried to sanitize it and clean it up uh, from any of the old uh, religious or spiritual aspects. And because of the way the Chinese communist government worked, it was a top down system and they created one textbook for the entire country. And who got to write this textbook? The herbalists got to write the textbook for the acupuncture um, students because the herbalists were literate and they had more political clout than the acupuncturists who were scattered around and weren't organized uh, politically in the same way. So the way many people were taught acupuncture was the same way that you would work from an herbal perspective, you take the symptoms, you come to a conclusion about the illness, and then you create an acupuncture formula, like a point formula, which it took me a long time before I realized I had learned acupuncture from herbalists. Um, it wasn't until I was out of school for a few years that, and studied with other acupuncturists that this, this is what was going on. I didn't know that. Yeah. Because, so for instance, you studied with that guy in Berkeley, or you worked under him. Oh, Bob Levine? Yeah. Yeah. He was more of an acupuncturist? No. But I don't want to get into... Okay, names. Okay. Naming names and... Uh, but I just wondered, I know you, you worked with different people. Bob is a brilliant uh, practitioner, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to get into... Do I you mean, consider he did yourself, homeopathy. Do you think you're a brilliant practitioner? I think he's a brilliant practitioner. Um, I do certain things very well, and 
and certain things not as well. What is your specialty? Hypnosis. <laughs> as far as acupuncture, what do you think? Uh, as you... far as acupuncture, uh, muscular skeletal issues. And I started drifting away from the herbal side and, and how did this happen? When I first started practicing, it was 1987. Oh, Beverly and... Owens went to a lecture with Bob Levine. Oh, see? See? Bob Levine is incredible. Um, so 1987, San Francisco, that's, that's when I started practicing. And what was happening in 1987 in San Francisco, AIDS, HIV, AIDS uh, was huge. And so much of my practice was really treating the symptoms of the treatments that were going on at that time, uh, including the symptoms from the illness itself. Um, the cocktails did, hadn't happened yet. And when I say the cocktails, meaning uh, the drugs that came on after AZT, uh, the drugs that are still being used today or, or the, the offspring of those drugs, which really came in around 1995-ish. Um, so when I was doing AIDS, working with AIDS patients, absolutely using herbs and that full-on approach. Uh, but as I got more into acupuncture, as an acupuncturist, um, Acupuncture is best for muscular skeletal issues. Do you use electricity with any of your acupuncture? What about pain? No, and this is just a personal thing. When I was in school, uh, I used, uh, I was practicing on my dad and I hooked it up to a machine <laughs> and shocked him uh, because those early, those early machines were like Heath kits and Heath kits from my hometown. Really? Yeah. I grew up on Heath kit. We made radios, everything. Yeah. It's from okay, St. Joseph, Benton Harbor. Not to diminish Heath kits. But, I love Heath kits. Uh, you hook, you put the needles in and they had metal handles and you have these alligator clips with the wire attached to the box. And there's a dial on the box and you slowly turn up the dial, but it was, really sort of a logarithmic scale and it wasn't that <laughs> it wasn't that sensitive um so i would ask my dad i do you feel anything do you feel anything do you feel anything pow uh that's when i stopped using electricity i know a lot of acupuncturists from china absolutely use electricity and when i was in beijing for an internship, we saw a C-section uh, where they had to use electricity uh, for the anesthesia or analgesia for the surgery. And that's to this day um, what they do. They'll use acupuncture needles attached to it. Now they're very sophisticated electrical devices that deliver an irregularly irregular current because you can't acclimate to the needles if you're having surgery that has to constantly be changing what about i remember years ago you did some bee sting therapy on me oh yeah that was fun so china has a long history of apitherapy or apitherapy oh, like which means which means any... was I one of your guinea pigs on that? I think probably. Yeah. Hey Jenna, there's you gotta come out. We're doing this new thing. With... Okay. Um, Sorry to interrupt. And uh, are you? No. The first thing you asked me: Are you allergic to bees? Who's the Senator Hart? What, um, Gary. Gary Hart. He he was a big pro pro proponent of bee sting therapy. Um, so bee uh, any treatment having to do with bees um honey or bee pollen or um royal jelly royal my jelly. mom my uses my mom uses royal jelly on her face yeah or bee sting therapy which is bee sting exactly what it when is when it's like an immunization so if if a bee stings you and you don't have a, an allergic reaction 
uh, you will you will have aggravated a uh, part of your body. And if you combine these points with acupuncture points, um, so instead of doing acupuncture with acupuncture needles, you can do acupuncture with bee stings. And there at this, I guess in the nineties uh, here, you would get a beekeeper to support this practice and the beekeeper would come with a huge jar one gallon jar of, of bees and you you take the bee with forceps or tweezers and you put the bee where you want the the problem uh, for some people would be that you know the bee dies so you're killing bees to treat you um so for buddhist practitioners that it wasn't a good thing um but you still tried it on me. People, people with certain conditions, MS particularly, responded. And you could build up to getting 10, 20 or more stings at a session. But what happens is the, the immune system is engaged. The immune system has to respond to the, the bee venom. And if you do it in a sophisticated way with, with working with acupuncture meridians, um, it's like turbocharged acupuncture. But not everyone, it's not for everyone. I did it. it, it, it isn't there a, is there a, a poem that begins with, if a bee stings? I don't know that poem. There but maybe for sat, Sunday night, you could read that poem. We could do themes. I thought about that, themes for poetry. But So how much of your business now is acupuncture versus hypnotherapy? Um, in terms of number of people or in terms of time spent or in terms of money no we're not talking money people uh, people i uh i still see more people with acupuncture and maybe two-thirds of the people i see are for acupuncture and are you still meeting people in their cars i still have a few people i mean in their cars can you explain to that to people in case car acupuncture uh are you car therapy no you're not you do hypnotherapy on the phone yeah and also in person okay. you know you know we're both vaccinated um it's, it's almost do you have like an office the good old days that little okay in the back he's having okay. i lost my two offices during covid and uh now we can diverge into talking about commercial real estate <sighs> because there's uh, a glut of office space now. People aren't going to the office People and there's it. a glut. Of, so I don't need, right now I have an office in my backyard. We live a little bit off the beaten path and that's okay. Um, I see people who live off the beaten path. Probably in the next year or so, I will eventually get an office back in the real world uh, where the major population center is. But at this point, uh, to take on the overhead is not I'm, not, I'm not ready to do that right now. So car acupuncture is when uh, I'll meet somebody in their car in a parking lot or on a nice little section of town and they sit in their passenger seat reclined i put the needles in shut the door go for a walk come back and take the needles out has their car ever not started when they were done no i haven't had that happen I'm just curious but Are i have their check I, engine light i have on jumper or cables so any other questions anybody that's a good question yeah so, but now you're also doing acupuncture in a facility. Yeah, one day a week, I work at a place called Modern Acupuncture. We've, we've done this before. The regulars know about this place. Um, Wait, one second, sorry. It it's, uh, looks like a
you're feeling blue. Patty Loman float like a butterfly. Oh, there is a. Oh, float like a butterfly. Oh, sting like a bee. When the dog bites. Oh, when the dog bite. When the bee stings. There you go. My favorite things. I simply remember my favorite things, and then I don't feel so bad. We're singing duet together. So your modern acupuncture is that's a ch a chain a franchise. It's a franchise. I show up. I'm an employee. Um, now we see twenty ish, twenty to thirty a day. Before COVID, it was like maybe close to fifty a day. Um, in this beautiful space, eight recline, you know, very nice reclining chairs and music, beautiful music in the background, nice lighting. Um, I like it. TV screens with nature shot. Oh, I was going to say, okay, TV. No, you know, monitors, mm -hmm. monitors with beautiful nature uh, footage. And there's music like the music is space music, you know. Space music, space, dude. Space out music. And that's available. People buy it. It's like a, a month. Yeah, it's it's really a, a fantastic way to make acupuncture more accessible because it's really about quantity. Like, but it's not quite community acupuncture. No, but it's close to community acupuncture. Actually, it is community acupuncture. Just more but, on a commercial level. Um, just community acupuncture 2.0. And it's accessible because let's say you sprain your ankle, you're going to need a lot of acupuncture in a short period of time, like four to six weeks. So you can for a little over $200 a month Here have we go. unlimited acupuncture, meaning uh, you could have one session every day of the week for a month. You can get 30 treatments. That's such a deal. That's less expensive than community acupuncture. Absolutely. If you went every day, you know, it ends up like five, six, bucks of treatment. It's pretty wild. Can you do acupuncture 30 times in a month? Sure. You can't over. No. You can't over. No, because you're not work at the chi or do something yeah, too so much. It's like, uh, it's like meditation. Can you meditate too much? Well, it depends on how you're doing your meditation. But you're not adding anything to the system. Like, like when you take herbal tea or medicine, you are adding something to the system that's foreign from the outside. So dosage would absolutely matter. But what acupuncture is doing is it's stimulating the what you already have to move in a different way and move in a way that's more towards homeostasis towards balance so you can't be balanced too much balance is balance makes sense yeah what could you this could happen is if one particular treatment is going more than 40 minutes an hour at a certain point your body acclimates and the the effect just diminishes so you you know you reach the point of diminishing returns for any given treatment. That's why in a certain you know acupuncture with surgery you need that electrical stimulation to continually shake it up, change the stimulation so that you don't get used to it, you don't acclimate to it. Makes sense. Do you have clients that come in thirty days? In no, no, no. Um, actually. We did have two or three who come maybe six days a week, five, six days a week. Most people come two, three times a week. That's nice. Yeah. That's great. Well, you guys, I'm so happy that you're here and we could do this again. Are you going to be back next week? I'll be here next week. Wait.
But it's getting late and Shauna has to get up early in the morning and I think we're going to watch a show. What are we going to watch? What are we watching, Shauna? Oh, we're going to start something new. They're watching Ted Lasso right no, now. We finished Ted oh, you Lasso. Oh, you finished Ted Lasso. We almost finished it. No, we did. <gasps> we did. We oh, saw gosh. the last we episode did. of no, the second we watch, season. Oh, we're going to watch the morning show. Morning show. That's morning what show. we're going to watch. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to start yeah. the morning show. Because we have my daughter's Apple TV. <laughs> Andy. <laughs> Hi, Carol. They're thanking you now. Aww. William, Bonnie Barker is going to be our guest, who is a Reiki master on Thursday night. So tomorrow morning, right. Wednesday, we'll be walking. Wednesday night, community night. Anybody want to jump on? We'll be, you know, ready to go. Thursday morning, Michael Keel. Thursday night, Bonnie Barker, Reiki master. Friday morning, Armando Ortega. Friday night, display and share. Saturday morning, Sunday morning, Saturday morning, I think, Jeff Metzger. Saturday night, Gary Lambert. Sunday morning, Alex Martinez. Sunday night, poetry glam, poetry glam. I love it, I love it, I love it. And then Monday morning, we meander, and Monday night, we meditate. And Tuesday morning, Patty will talk. And then Tuesday night, Dr. Andrew Rader, superstar. You lurk if, I, if you only could. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, morning show is good. Rob says morning show is good. Yay. This Thank is Rob you. Morocco. Rob Morocco. Mm -hmm. Yay. <laughs> they love, they like the morning show. Carol said it too. Oh my goodness. I have to show you Friday night's show again. Okay. Friday night's show. Do you guys, if you weren't here on Friday night for display and share, you don't even have to, I mean, Lisa's display and share was very cool. But fast forward to, to Rob showing Carol's painting. Carol, still, I can't believe it. I just can't believe what you do. It's just incredible. It's just incredible. But again, thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew Rader. Anything else you have to say to anybody? I like this. Is that cashmere? Oh, this is interesting. So on, um, on Jenna's laptop, I appear on the right side of the screen and Jenna's on the left, but on the live oh, right. Facebook feed on her phone, it's a flipped image. It's totally flipped. Which is actually the way it would look if, if you were inside the camera looking out. That would be more accurate. That's interesting. I hadn't noticed that. Yeah. What did I So ask the laptop you? is inaccurate so we have to do the whole show over so we'll again. just we're going to rewind it what if we just turn it around <laughs> okay you ready thanks you guys who's going to give me a letter i need a letter shauna can i have a letter please quickly m m oh my goodness shauna raider made such a beautiful dinner tonight so did Dr. Andy, and everything is out of sight. Facebook has flipped, and now it's meta. Oh, I'm so happy to be in Marin County tonight because everything's coming up M's, and I hope that all of you stay safe, stay healthy, be real nice. No mice in the house unless you have them as a pet. It's kind of fun. So please have miraculous thoughts and love, mm. heart, mm. M. M, and move slowly. Move slowly in your words and from your heart. Magnificent heart. You too, Carol. Everybody Magnetize. have a great night. A magnetist, magnet. Magnetize, magnetize whatever you want. How's that? Right there. Andrew Rader. Love hard, everybody. Love hard. Real hard. <laughs> Good night, Mama Grace. Bye. He's learning.